Hello YouTube. Well, um, I've been testing with welding cast iron recently. We had a pe uh, uh, just testing welding it with a regular MIG wire. Had to heat it up pretty hot, but it worked. A uh, uh, little bit of porosity in there. You can pretty clearly see the transition between the two metals. Um, the gray, the cast iron is a little bit darker. But uh, I've tested welding uh, holes in there. You can see there a little circle in there. Um, I've test, I welded um, big uh, layers on top and pounded it with a hammer as hard as I could, and it didn't fracture. So that's what the uh, cast iron looks like when it's broken. Not sure if it really matters a whole lot whether it's gray or uh, white cast iron when welding, but. Um, what I got going on is I got this cast iron anvil that uh, I've had for a while and it is, uh, I'm thinking I might be able to modify it. So uh, just to get better penetration in the uh, cast, I'm going to be drilling some holes into the uh, top there. What's interesting is that you don't see a whole lot of uh, welding cast iron with regular MIG wire anywhere on YouTube. I'm sure it can be done, but uh, I want to test that out and possibly uh, see if you can save money without having to buy specialty alloys for welding cast iron. I end up drilling them quite a bit deeper than uh, at a later time. So now it's all, I've got all the holes that I want to drill, even in the horn. And I'm just going to go along all the corners, create a pretty deep bevel, uh, as well as clean up all of the surfaces, get uh, as much of the paint off as I could, and the rust. See there the casting with the weight, 85 pounds. And uh, here on the bottom is uh, some filler there. This is a sin of many of the cast iron anvils that you see. Um, you've seen them cut open or whatever, and they've got that filler there where there was a uh, mishap with the casting. Here we're just um, lighting up a torch to heat up this anvil because this cast iron definitely needs a preheat. Um, to bond well. I tested that. Uh, if it was too cold then the welds would crack. And especially because of the size of this piece, even with welding a big piece of regular steel, you'd need a preheat at least 300 degrees. So you can see a little smoke coming off there, showing how hot it is. There I go. Just starting off on the edges, a little bit of a about 5 eighths inch long uh, tack. Hitting it with the chip hammer, weld chipper. Um, I've heard that helps with the, uh, with the welds on cast iron, especially in the beginning. Just going to do that for a little while until it gets as hot that I don't think I'll need to do that anymore. Now I'm just filling in those holes. I'm half tempted to call the title of this video uh, Welding Cast Iron with Regular MIG Wire because you don't find it anywhere else. It's not that hard to do, you just gotta make sure that the uh, material is hot. Uh, you go careful with it and keep the metal clean. Um, make sure it's brushed. After I got those holes filled in, just continuing along the face, going to do a, a couple of passes on the face. Uh, the anvil is pretty hot now. This stuff is kind of interesting to weld. It's almost like it's burning when it's being welded. You kind of see a little bit of flame there. You can see um, how much I built up on the horn there. 
got about a quarter inch of uh, build up on that horn. And very relatively square edges, so I wanted to make it rounder so I had to build up that center. starting the second pass here uh, as well as um, thickening up that edge. I prefer to have the face wider as well as um, the mild steel of the welding wire will be stronger than the cast iron. Here it is after both passes. Got about 3 16ths to a quarter inch of raw mild steel on there on top of the cast iron. Weld it up pretty well. If anyone's wondering, I am doing this at work. Uh, as long as I do it on my lunch break, they don't mind. They don't mind at all. Hey, get back to work! All right, so I ground down the surface a little bit and started adding on some uh, pieces onto the end. This is a half inch round. See, I left a pretty substantial gap there for full penetration. Added a whole bunch along there. I'm going to show you how to test to see if metal is hot. Lovely. Here it is after it's all filled in. Full penetration all the way. There was a lot of welding there. You can also say I, I added onto the tip. Uh, just to um, get that uh, sharper point. Uh, after that, just went through a lot of grinding, trying to get it decently flat before I moved on to the hard facing rod. Uh, I've never done hard facing rod. I welded. I ordered this online. It's good. At re it's got good resistance to abrasion and uh, impact, which is what we want. Made out of H12 air hardening steel. Uh, they recommend. Uh, heat tree um, preheating the material and especially with something the size that probably be necessary otherwise the uh, hard face rod will crack now this uh, this wire cost more than I'd like to admit not very uh, cheap stuff. Once again, this is the first time I've used this wire. Uh, it's a flux core wire, so I'm and I'm using a gas shield, so it's a bit of a new experience. Even the little uh, even the little dingleberries that fly off the weld are pretty hard. I'm gonna lay on a, a full pass. Now for some reason I forgot to grind the bevels beforehand so I did that now and I'm just filling in the the edges. Get, I want those edges to be uh, pretty thick with the hard face because those are the most susceptible to cracking and breaking off. Here it is after the first full pass and uh, grinding. You can see there's quite a few divots in there. We've got to fill in with more of the hard face rod and then move back to the grinder. And here it is after the uh, surface is all ground down. The cup wheel on that 7 inch angle grinder is very useful for getting a completely flat surface. You can see how well the, uh, how flat 
and straight that edge is. Now that hardy hole is a bit of an issue. I'm going to go along with the cold chisel along the inside to gouge out some of that softer material. But I'm going to have to bring it home to my uh, little die grinder in order to uh, remove the hard face rod that's on top. And it popped off just like that. Cold chisels are wonderful tools. They're really, really not used as much as they should be. Here we are using a little uh, Dremel at home, um, trying to remove some of that hard material. You can see that the hardy tool doesn't quite fit. This one's fitted to my other anvils. But uh, you know, I'll file some more, try to get it as close as possible. It's about out of a sixteenth to an eighth of an inch difference, but uh, this isn't going to be a huge forging anvil anyway. But it looks really nice. I'm very happy with it. We are testing out the rebound with the ball bearing. To me, it seems about 75 80 percent rebound. This here is a Vulcan cast iron base anvil, the steel face on top, so similar to the one that I just made. You know, about, about the same. This here is a Fisher. These are really good brands. It's a cast iron base with a very thick steel face. And this one's about 90, 95% rebound. This here is my Hay Button 100 pound anvil. This one's about 80 to 90%. And back to the one that I just uh, modified. Real good. I have plans for that. But the question is, will it forge on? Can you forge on it? Find out now. To answer the question, yes. Yes, you can forge on it. And as far as I can tell, there is no damage to the face. Looked at the edges. There's uh, no cracking that I can tell so far. Wouldn't recommend uh, hammering anything big on this anyway because it's pretty light anvil. It's about, about 60 something pounds now, 62 pounds. But uh, it looks really nice and it's probably going to be my travel anvil when I do uh, demonstrations. And if you're wondering how the ring is compared to other anvils, there's my hay button, wrought iron base, steel face. My Fisher, the cast iron base. Good rebound, but uh, very little to no ring. Same with this, a little more ring. Um, and this one that I modified, it's got some ring to it, but um, that doesn't. Once again, it was a lot of fun to be able to do. Um, looks really nice, and it's a great project for anyone who's wanted to add to their anvil collection. Like I said, I have plans for this one. Hope you enjoyed. Do subscribe. Hope you find this found this video entertaining and possibly a little bit educational.